Inauguration Day in D.C. And only one Alabama station was there, CBS 42. Washington, D.C. is getting ready for all of the pomp and circumstance. With a complete live and local coverage from our nation's capital. No matter what you feel about the politics, this is a important moment. Bringing you Alabama stories from a national stage. The Talladega College marching tornadoes, you saw them today. Continuing our promise that CBS 42 is coverage you can count on. There's been a lot of sharp criticism of President Barack Obama over the past eight years due to his lack of funding support for historically black colleges and universities, also known as HBCUs. Now, as Donald Trump is set to take the presidency, a White House HBCU initiative hangs in the balance. We will be great. We will be great. Not alone. Not alone. But together. But together. My education. My education. A message of hope from a sophomore at Morehouse College to a group of students at Birmingham's Putnam Middle School, arming them with tools to overcome challenges he now faces. That's the issue now that colleges don't really have enough resources to keep their students. And that's one reason why we're failing is because schools all the way from elementary to college are having issues with funding. Under President Barack Obama, Jarrell Jordan was selected to be a White House ambassador for historically black colleges and universities, who often criticized President Obama for his lack of funding. It could go towards actually keeping students in, uh, in these schools, and because they don't have the funding, it leads to the data showing that we're failing because um, our retention rate is not great. Betsy DeVos, the nominee for Secretary of Education, faced tough questions about the future of schools in the country at her confirmation hearing. Will you work with me and others to make public colleges and universities tuition free through federal and state efforts? It's really great to consider and think about, but I think we also have to consider the fact that there's nothing in life that's truly free. Her background is in privatizing schools, and we have so many public schools that are failing now. And because our public schools are failing, that does not mean that we change the whole system and turn them into a private school. With the future of Jordan's White House HBCU ambassadorship dependent on the Trump administration to continue, he wants them to know one thing. Please value education as much as I do, because education is the one thing that's going to keep this country going. Stefan, the Talladega College marching tornadoes, they have become a story in and of themselves, but they are here and they've arrived with much fanfare. Yes, yeah, sure. you know, just a month ago, I don't think anybody at Talladega College would have expected the national attention or anything that has come from this. Um, but, you know, this morning, as they get prepared to march down Pennsylvania Avenue, they will be a part of history. I wasn't even focused on, you know, Trump. I was just focused on the experience and, you know, strictly business. On a Thursday in Talladega, students go to class by day in light of backlash over their decision to march in the inaugural parade of Donald Trump. It's not about what everyone thinks it's about. It's all about the band being able to go to do something that we never thought we would be able to do. By nightfall, the marching tornadoes practice a new set of tunes to show the nation and the world their loud, bold sound before they were set to head to the nation's capital. Uh, I'm just so happy and proud of our students and, uh, and, and, and proud of the fact that they're going to have the opportunity to perform on a worldwide stage. The marching tornadoes packed up and hit the road to Washington, D.C., and 15 hours later, tired and all, they were greeted by Amarosa and shown the African American Civil War Museum. I'm standing with the drum majors. King said, if you want to be a drum major, be a drum major for justice. That you have to stand for something or you'll fall for anything. Now, Amarosa, obviously a big part of why these students are here. She helped them actually raise uh, their GoFundMe to now over $650,000. And coming up in the next half hour, we'll actually hear from those students what they think about being here in D.C. Sherry. Good morning, Art. I'll tell you this. When I got in yesterday, you know, I'm from this area. Obviously, always beautiful sights and scenes, but there seems to be a mix of emotions here. You know, I was at a gas station just outside of D.C., and one woman said, oh, you know, are you going to the inauguration? She was super excited.
excited, says she's going to tune in. But then you get here and you also see those points of protest. So several points of contention here in the city uh, coming with Donald Trump. And if you've been living under a rock, you would know why over the past few months, lots of controversy. So obviously you're going to have lots of protests. The Women's March just coming up on Saturday. They have hold, they are, they're holding 1,200 bus spots on Saturday as opposed to 200 just for the inauguration. CBS 42 News reporter Stefan Dingle joins us now. Stefan, certainly, as we said earlier, protest seems to be a theme of the day. Some would argue that the vote of Donald Trump to the White House was a way of protesting what was happening in Washington, but you found a different type of protest today. Yeah, sure, you're right. Uh, at DuPont Circle, that's in Northwest DC. It was actually quite a sight to see, or in this case, a smell. And uh, as this term I taught you before, it, people were getting lit. And so uh, Trump supporters decided to fight fire with the sound of their bikes. A group of pro Trump bikers crashed the party of a Trump 420 protest. Chill out, you know, smoke a joint or don't. But uh, you know, you know, we're we're all we're just human beings, man. Thousands lined the street for free marijuana, but all with different messages against President Trump: climate change, sexual assault, and the urge to legalize marijuana. I suffer from fibromyalgia and chronic fatigue syndrome, and it really helps me with the pain. And I'm really scared that those rights are going to be taken away from me. Protests of all kinds on the National Mall during the inauguration. Trump supporters calling it all a stunt. Oh, uh, these protesters are losers. Are you kidding me? These people, I mean, I love from school. That's why I'm here today. These people are 40, 50 years old. Do they have jobs? They're coming from across the country to come protest. I mean, the proof is here that the, that the, the divisiveness comes from the left, not from the right. Uh, so I, I think he's going to be a uniter. I don't think he's going to be divisive. But Lisa Foss said protests from both sides may not be such a bad thing. So I'm hoping that this has been like a flashlight shining on the cockroaches and they're going to come out and we can see the problems and now we can maybe address them. So much divide on display today, Sherry, but President Trump in his inaugural address urging and, and insisting that there will be unity when he takes the office. Now coming up at 6, we'll hear from people on both sides who are going to try to hold his feet to the fire and see what they think he will do now that he is the leader of the free world. We begin, though, with CBS 42 News reporter Stefan Dingle. And Stefan, it has been a day. We talked earlier about it has been marked by celebration and protest, but all eyes on Donald Trump right now. Yes, yeah, Sherry, what a long day. Uh, today, there was a lot of uncertainty among not only his protesters, but supporters as well. As uh, when he gave his address, he stuck to script saying he's going to try to make America truly great again. It's the greatest day that I've had. I mean, it, things is fixing to change. Optimism and hope after President Donald Trump addressed the nation, saying he will bring change to Washington. I think it's an America first message, which is really important because we can't be worrying about other people if we don't have our uh, own problems figured out, you know. Even in the eyes of protests, one anti Trump woman said she's not necessarily against the new president. I want him to succeed, but I'm against his policies. I got to put my hope in him because look, there's no, like you said, he's our president. There's no other reality. It's reality. So I'm going to put my hope in him and hope he does the best. And his supporters have all the hope in the world, barring a surprise from Congress. Do you have any concerns, if any, uh, going forward about uh, President Trump? He just needs to keep his mouth harnessed. <laughs> it is the biggest thing. Killian, Killian Conway will do that for him. She'll harness his mouth. Now, Sherry, there are not only concerns about what Donald Trump says, but also what he tweets now that he has been sworn in officially as the next president. Uh, he now takes over that Twitter handle of POTUS that Obama has given him. But he said he's also going to keep his personal account, which has millions of followers. Well, you know, President Obama kept his personal account, but yeah. my understanding is that the Secret Service didn't allow him to use it. <laughs> Yeah, so. we'll see how that works out with Trump. But but a lot of uh, a lot of people just kind of wondering what's next, uh, protesters and supporters alike. Inauguration day in D.C. and only one Alabama station was there. CBS 42. No matter what you feel about the politics, this is a important moment. Continuing our promise that CBS 42 is coverage you can count on.